All right, let's call to order the June 20th, 19, 2017 meeting. Oh, there's another And you're on. Okay. Uh, I was the uh, uh, Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, 1917. A couple of things first. Uh, first, we hope uh, Andy Murphy, the chairperson of the school committee, has a fast recovery and he'll be back with us soon, we hope. Uh, secondly, a lot of uh, teachers and other personnel in the school system get all sorts of kudos and acknowledgments for a job well done. But uh, I think I share this with many of you on the committee that Dr. Mulqueen very seldom gets uh, acknowledgement and a pat on the head in public. So f for another real good year, thank you for a job well sure. done. Okay. Uh, roll call. I'm present. Joanna No, Bill Buell. On time. Emily Dwyer. Here. Dick Hodges. Here. Lisa O'Connor. Here. Andy Murphy isn't with us tonight. Previous, Chris Redding. Here. And Dina Trott. Here. So, let's uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And Dick Hodges, can you lead us in this please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, seems to be somewhat of a short one tonight. Uh, everybody's had a chance to take a look at the agenda. Do I have a motion to accept the agenda? So moved. Second. Second? Okay. All those who accept the agenda, please raise your hand. Those opposed? No. Passed. Uh, have you read the business meetings from June 6, 2017? Uh, Make a motion to accept it. To accept it. Beautiful. Second. second. Okay, there's a second from Bill. Uh, please raise your hand if you accept the motion. On the okay, that passes. Public comment. The one public. Here we go. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Pawtucket Arts Foundation, I just wanted to express um, our real disappointment in learning that uh, Eris Moore will not be teaching at the middle school. I know this isn't a school committee decision, but we felt she was perfectly situated there, and it was a great transition for kids going from elementary to high school uh, to be in her class. And while Bagnell students will benefit, students in West Newbury and Merrimack will uh, will lose out and we're actually really concerned that maybe the whole district will lose out because she may not stick around so we just wanted to let you know how we felt about that thank you all right next on the agenda uh superintendent's report Dr. okay Mulkey. thank you so uh for tonight's report um you all have <coughs> received earlier and at your places you have a hard copy of a five-year um Endpoint. So five years ago, we began a journey to help transform the district. Typically, I give an update for the year, and I thought it was appropriate since we had a five-year plan to bring that to a conclusion. So uh, at the outset of the report, uh, you'll read a little bit about some of the descriptors that, that were uh, pretty profound uh, back in 2012, 2013, when, when uh, I first arrived. I did a lot of work with parents and teachers and students to get a flavor for the district and the electrical systems still <laughs> need improvement. <laughs> but um, the first page is more of a synopsis of, of some of those indicators and it talks about how we all came together with some pretty strong priorities and uh, five strategic ob objectives. One of the uh, probably one of the biggest ones is our Pentucket <coughs> curriculum and that that launch is a pretty significant one um, and in the document that I sent out today uh, folks would be able to click on that and go right to the curriculum and see it which will be a benefit for them they can also do the same for the curriculum renewal policy if they have a question about what that might look like and you know across the five objectives Oh, thanks. 
Is it motion sensitive? Is that what's going on? Uh, you know, so there are other uh, components here that you can click on and you can go directly to the, the website and see some information. But I thought really that would be more appropriate to see how far have we come in five years. And it ends with um, a focus on the school building project. And it, it sort of is a pretty clear choice that's presented here. So I know that we struggle with all the different components of MSBA and the school building project, but after reflecting, it seems pretty evident that we've got to move forward with some kind of improvement to, at the secondary level. And if we don't, there's not a choice of not doing. It will probably spell the end of our district, you know, as a, as a vital school district. One more catastrophic event could be the last that we could suffer and I'm not trying to be over dramatic about it it's just what is and so I think we're at a, a crossroads really where we've got to all get behind some kind of a, a building project all three communities and if that's not going to be the case then we need to be thinking very differently about what happens next so um, you know there are some facts and figures that I included along the way, you know, the, the history, five-year history of our budget increases are included, school grants. We have very generous donors in the district. Uh, Pentucket Arts Foundation is a, a great donor. The PEF is a great donor and, and many others. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to conclude the year with this. And as usual, I put in the uh, college acceptances, that list at the end. And we had to use almost microscopic print to get it all on one page this year because we have so many different colleges and universities that kids got into. And the, uh, here at the secondary level, at the high school, we have a big emphasis on, on uh, trying to move forward uh, for early acceptance, early decisions. And I think that may be part of the reason that we have so many different colleges represented. I think kids really do focus on the top five or so, and they really do a great job at trying to get into those. So I didn't know if you had any questions or not, but this has been sent out to uh, the faculty, the parents, and uh, you know, I think it would even be a good document you know, to share out more publicly than that, uh, to show how far we've come. It's not that we are finished, we have lots more work to do, but we have certainly come a long way. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No comments? Okay, let's go on to new business. Uh, the school committee subcommittee. Uh, Marianne passed out to you a sheet that isn't totally correct, so if you want to make the following changes. And these came from uh, input that Andy received from all of you, with a couple of you saying, just put me wherever I'm needed. And uh, hopefully, and I, and I think he did, satisfy the needs for most everybody which wanted to be on specific ones. So in the business, finance, and operations, uh, chairing it is going to be Dick Hodges, Chris Redding, and Andy Murphy. On Human Resources, Chairperson Emily Dwyer, Bill Buell, Dina Trada. Teaching Learning and Accountability, well, chaired by Dina Trada, Joanna Blanchard, Bill Buell, and from Groveland, Emily Dwyer. And the policy will cha be chaired by myself, Lisa O'Connor, Chris Redding, Dick Hodges. And on Communications, uh, Andy Murphy will be the chairperson with Lisa O'Connor and Joanna Blanchard. Emily uh, will be on teaching learning. Very again. nicely switched positions so we could be representative from Groveland on teaching learning and accountability. So thank you. So uh, that's probably going to be put up on the website, and I guess that's a done deal. And if this year is any indication, it turns out the majority of us go to the majority of them anyways. So that's a good thing. And on, is there any comments or questions on that, by the way, I could entertain, pass on to Andy? No. Nope. So let's move forward then to new business uh, on MSBA building project update. Uh, Greg Lebrecht, 
our business manager wasn't able to be with us tonight, so I'm going to pass this on to you, Dr. Mulquin. Sure. And um, the, the way I'm going to approach this is to just refer back to a letter that I recently sent on uh, June 9th to the selectmen over at Merrimack. I also forward this to our selectmen in Groveland and West Newbury as well. And um, the selectmen over in Merrimack invited us in, invited the members of the school committee and me to join them uh, to talk through the MSBA project, where we are, you know, and they had some questions. So I thought this would be maybe a helpful summary. Um, this came on the heels of us visiting Winthrop. And Winthrop has a project that they completed in August and opened uh, that was similar in scope and size to what we're thinking about. And, uh, you know, I, I'm perfectly happy if any of the members who attended had something to contribute just as we did that night. But uh, the superintendent was very generous in giving us a tour. He talked about the benefits of combining, as they did, middle and high school for the facility. There are certain things that a middle school would not be entitled to, for instance, an auditorium, as his example. And because they combine the, school, uh, the two school populations, his auditorium, for instance, is able to hold both all of the middle school at one time or all of the high school, which is unusual. Because if you build, for instance, for just the high school, you only get a percentage of your population that is seated in the auditorium. They don't build it for every student to be able to be seated. That was just one example that he used. Uh, and uh, some of the other questions that they raised were about the reimbursement rate. Um, I think as I highlighted in this report, our reimbursement rate is 52.89%. So at the end of the day, it comes out to around 50%. You know. Um, there are things that are included for reimbursement, other things that are not. Uh, that is all worked out through the process. Uh, but that certainly is, as I think one member pointed out who was on the tour, it certainly is a better idea to do it in partnership with the MSBA for some reimbursement rather than nothing. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I think there's a, a strong message there. And uh, the range of the building project it's too early to tell right now. We're, we're still in the beginning part of the feasibility study. And uh, Winthrop, as I said, is about similar scope and size. They came in just around 80, just over $80 uh, million. And so if you project out a couple of years, you could reasonably guess 90 to 120, you know, somewhere in that range. So, um, you know, we're anticipating that within 18 or 24 months that we'll be coming to the towns with not only, you know, uh, um, an ask for them to vote for funding, but also in, uh, they'll have an idea of what we're talking about in a lot more detail than we're able to give them right now. So, um, you know, Greg and I went for some training, mandatory training that came up, I think, last Friday. Uh, there are these things that we're obligated to do along the way, and um, I think we're, we continue to be ahead of, you know, our timeline and on track for, an, as I said, 18 to 24 months, and we'll be, we'll be in a very different spot. People will know what we're talking about, they'll have some costs in front of them, and we'll be able to move forward. So I didn't know if somebody who had gone to the uh, Winthrop visit might have something to say or one of the Merrimack uh, folks might have something to say about you know our visit with the Merrimack Board of Selectmen. Well I'll pass on what uh, Joanna Blanchard had said. She was real surprised that going through that it was really the low end of the cost of a building project. It was initially estimated about 84 million it came under budget and it came in sooner than the completion date, both good things. But her big surprise was it looked state of the art when it was at the low end of the range they were given, just like particularly us. And I, too, was surprised. And I've seen several new building projects. I said, wow, it doesn't look like a low end. It does look like a state of the art. 
Yeah. Lisa? Um, so I went on the tour and I was really happy to see how they thoughtfully separated the middle school and high schoolers into separate wings, yet they were still able to share the same kitchen space, but different cafeterias, yeah. and the same thing with the gymnasium. Yeah. Um, and it was just very well thought out. They both had separate entrances, and you know, really at no point in time did the students really cross paths, yet they were all in the same building, mm -hmm. sharing some of the same staff. Yeah, even the door that we went through to get to the middle school was locked from both sides. And there was no always somebody in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was cool. also there, and I was very impressed with how they built it and the open space that they use for the kids to be able to study, and just the ergonomics of it all was amazing. Like yeah, the feel is very different, yeah. you know, in one of these nice new buildings. Yeah. It was exciting, actually. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of open space, but yet they could shut down areas to make it more of a secluded space when needed. <coughs> well, any more questions? Since we've had four people here that weren't, no questions. I guess we can move on. And uh, can I jump back to the superintendent's report for a second, please? Sure. Uh, the word grant came up, and it just happened to trigger something. I really think this school system would benefit greatly for a grant writer who would write grants for all three towns and uh, specifically around school needs. There are millions and millions of federal dollars that are never tapped because nobody's doing anything. Uh, those of you who are interviewing the assistant superintendent, I would wonder if uh, you sh should put that on your list as one of the skill sets that we could look for and benefit without having to specifically hire a grant writer, per se. This could become part of the job description, and this school system could benefit greatly in a, in a very strong financial way. Thank you, Jeff. Well, that concludes our very short evening here. We do have an executive session to go to, so we're gonna have to, and we will not be back. And uh, we'll take a roll call once again. Emily, while is there a motion on the floor that we adjourn and go to executive session? So moved. Second. Second. There we go. There it is. Roll call. Emily? Yes. Dana? Yes. Christine? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Dick? Yes. Bill? Yes. Wayne? Do we need to read that? Read that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll just read that. To, and we're leaving to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, director of supplemental and intensive services. Thank you.